What up? I'm back with another one. Got the Kawi glasses on. You already know. Let's get into valve adjustments and why it is that you need to do a valve adjustment. Why is it important? I'm going to let you know why it's important and why you need to do it, even though it's tedious. So if you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself or you don't know how to do it and you want to try, well, maybe this will be the video to help you out so you can get it done and save yourself a little bit of money. But if you don't feel comfortable doing it, I suggest take it to a shop if you're not comfortable working on your bike because any type of mistake can be kind of catastrophic to the life of your engine. Let's get into it right after the intro. All right. So before we get into the actual measuring of the valve clearances, I'm gonna explain for those of you that don't know the purpose of the valves so you can understand what their function is and why this is important for the health of your engine. So you basically have intake valves and exhaust valves. The intake valves open up to allow fresh air to go into the cylinder to be combusted with fuel and then after it's combusted then the exhaust valves will open and allow those burnt fumes burnt that burnt exhaust gas to exit out through your exhaust system what goes in has to come out that's basically in a nutshell what your valves do now they're timed very 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 precisely and over time these valves can get out of adjustment heat causes valves and just metal in general to either expand contract there's also springs that may get a little compressed over time it's going to change your valve clearance there's a factory spec on what the clearance should be between the cam lobe and the valve so that it can open precisely at the right time when that fuel is ignited so i'm going to throw up on the screen here as you can see let me give you guys a bit of a visual of what's going on in your engine and these valves so as you can see the way that these valves open up for air to go in fuel is injected spark plug ignites the fuel and then it's sent out out through the exhaust side when your exhaust valves open that's the function of these valves they get out of spec and you can have problem big problem so I'm going to show you another visual of a possibility of what can happen when your valves are out of time and that's what you don't want to happen that is big big problems so now let's get into checking these clearances so you're going to need a few tools on your intake valves and your exhaust valves and that's going to be a feeler gauge now the feeler gauge is what's going to measure the, the gap between the cam lobe and the valve shim bucket that holds the little shim in there and we're going to get into that more when we go to do the actual adjustment this video is just going to be for checking the clearance so the first thing i want you guys to do if you're going to be checking your valve clearance is you need to get a hold of your factory service manual in your factory service manual it's going to show you what your valve clearance should be for your intake side and what it should be for your exhaust side so it should be between this number and that number so if you go through it for the maintenance portion of your service manual you should find it in there so that's going to be your number one thing you, ain't, you don't want to guess what the clearance should be on this not at all now you can get feeler gauges in standard or metric considering that this is a japanese bike it's going to be metric is going to be the way to go because that's what it's going to show in your factory service manual your valve clearance now you're gonna have straight feeler gauges that look like this. They're basically just little blades that are thin, different sizes. They have the sizes stamped onto them. And this is what you're gonna check your valve clearance with. But using these straight ones can be a little difficult considering the clearance and space that you have with your frame being there and everything like that. So these can sometimes work, but they might be a bit of a pain in tight areas. So they also make them like this with a bit of a 45 degree bend so that way you can, it's a little easier for you to get them under the uh, cam lobe so that you can measure your clearance. So this is what we're going to be using to check the clearance. So now let's get to the bike and I'm going to switch to a first person view to show you exactly what we're going to be measuring and how it's going to look and how we go about doing it.
all right well now that we got the whole bike taken apart for the most part now these cam lobes right here are what we're going to be measuring the clearance underneath them with the feeler gauges now you see the cam lobe it looks kind of like an egg shape pointing straight up that's how you're going to measure it each one has to be pointed straight up when you measure it all right that's that's exactly how it needs to look when you go and put the feeler gauge in you're gonna have to rotate the motor clockwise to get the cam lobes facing up when you go to measure it all right so you're gonna come over here to the side of the bike and these two caps you got to take off uh, this one I already broke them loose because it was really really difficult I had to get like a impact uh, screwdriver to get it off to hit it and then bam pops it loose so I had to get that just to get it loose so we don't really got to worry about the other one right now but we need to get this one off and inside there is where your crankshaft is and the crankshaft has like a little like bolt on it that we're gonna use to spin the motor over to get the cam lobes up facing up like that all right now we're gonna use a Torx uh, believe what its size is that right there t50 Torx and that's what we're gonna need to rotate the motor so boom and we gotta rotate it clockwise gotta be clockwise guys so now we're gonna start from that end and work our way over so from basically the back of the motor to the front those are where your cam gears are where the timing chain is so now let me explain what this is so this is basically kind of like the little chart that I drew how I where I write down all the measurements so over here's the cam gears where the timing chain is just so that way you know that that's what that is all right that side of the motor now here is we're gonna write our first number so there's four valves on each cylinder so this is the intake side so that's those little circles are in there so each box right underneath is going to be where we're going to write now this is our going to be our goal here that's the clearance that we're looking for for the exhaust all right something between 24 millimeter and the 31 millimeter same thing for the intake now these are going to be the feeler gauges that we need to do it let's go all right now we're gonna start trying to get this in on the lower size and see if we can get it to slide through what you're looking for is for it to go through in between the cam lobe and the bucket and it doesn't fit so we're gonna have to go assume that that's a three because that was the smallest one I had, which was a five, and it didn't go through. So we're going to do the three, all right? And the other one was also a three. I didn't do it on the camera, but it's a three because it also didn't go through. All right, now moving on, we got to get to the next ones over. See how they're kind of pointed a little bit down? So we don't want that. We want them facing up in order to measure because like that you can't get a proper measurement they have to be facing up to get the exact measurement so we're gonna make sure it's up just like that one we gotta rotate this motor clockwise remember clockwise so let's go ahead and rotate it and keep rotating keep rotating so you see that lobe go up. All right, boom. And then now we can move on to those two. So that's the size we're gonna be trying. Let's see if that goes. And let's see there. So it's gonna be those two, the one on the left of it also, underneath the cam cap. Trying from the back side and still didn't go. Try there. Boom. Didn't want to go. So you're looking for the feel you're looking for is 
feeling the cam lobe and the bucket like scrape like you want to feel the rubbing on the top of the feeler gauge and the bottom all right so now let's get these numbers down And that's what I measured for that. That's because the feeler gauge didn't fit on those either. So we're assuming those are that low. Now let's rotate it again. And get this cam lobe up. See those two cam lobes going up? Those are the ones we're going to measure right there. Once they're facing up. And you're just going to continue to do this process all the way through trying to find which one goes through with slight drag so you see it pop through the other end so see it's got slight drag on it and that's what you want you want that slight drag we're going to try another one and see if it has a better drag on it so maybe that one went in a little too easy Nope, oh, that one didn't go. So that one's going to be the five. All right, so just keep marking down all your measurements that you get from these feeler gauges, whichever one goes through. But we're going to, like, ramp this up a little bit because uh, it's such a tedious process. So I kind of just want to go ahead and speed this up a bit because you're going to go through all of it. And this is going to take a lot longer to see me do every single valve. So I'm going to speed these video clips up and uh then we'll move on to the exhaust side keep rotating that motor get those cams up sizes so we're going to write those down in those boxes right underneath and that'll complete the intake side then we're going to move on to the exhaust side so now what we're looking for on those exhaust sides exhaust valves are those right there so between the 24 and the 31 and we're going to write them in those boxes right above it the same way we did on that lower one all right now we're going to spin this motor over and continue to do what we're doing measuring these valves uh, the only difference is now you're going to come at it from that back side. But same deal, cam lobes up, and you're going to get your measurement from that way. So go through all your gauges to try to cover to make sure, not all your gauges, but start at the higher end of what the clearance should be, and work your way to the lower. Try to see exactly what size that is. Remember, you're looking for that slight drag where you can feel the lobe and the bucket on, you know, on the feeler gauge so it's rubbing on the top and the bottom of that feeler gauge just like that it has that drag and that's gonna be your size go up a size to where you feel like it doesn't fit just like that then you know that it's the size right below it all right so now just same deal we're gonna just keep putting all those numbers in the top boxes so for each valve let's just keep rolling through it it's so tedious to do this so if you decide to not uh, do this yourself and take it to a shop, I'm also showing you this. So when they tell you the price of what they're going to charge you, you understand why they're charging you so much money because it's so much goes into this. And this is just a clearance check, not even the uh, actual adjustment, which we're going to do in the next video. So just keep doing what you're doing. All right, we're almost done. Few valves left. All right. But that's pretty much how it goes. And just this is for 09 ZX6R. So if you don't have a 09 to 12 ZX6R, don't follow these exact specs. Check your factory service manual. I cannot stress that enough. All right. So there it is. You just did it. 
Now that's how you check your valve clearances. As you can see, all my valves were completely out of whack. Each one was way too tight. I don't even know how my bike is running properly for as long as it has been. That's what happens when you put it off for way too long. So don't be like me and get your valves checked. So on the next video, we're gonna be doing the actual valve adjustment so I can show you how to adjust the valves after you measure it and realize you got a bunch of bogus clearances that are out of spec. If this helped you in any way, shape, or form, if you have any questions or whatever, drop them in the comments. And if you're new and you wanna see more of this, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss any more of these videos because we still got a bunch more to do before old girl gets back on the road. We still have to get that radiator done, electrical for the fans of the radiator done, and a few more other things. So you don't wanna miss any of that if you wanna know how I do all this stuff that I do. Till next time, Ninja Turtle Stunts. You already know, I'm out, peace. Hey, look, I talk my shit and keep it honest, keep it independent. I hear them hating, but that's only cause they inconsistent. He said the weapon wouldn't prosper, not it wouldn't form. I'm about to golf, I hit the